I'm really good at this song, and I want to dedicate it to the mother and to my grandmother. Who used to sing this when I was a little girl? I am bound for Mount Zion, way out on a hill. I am bound. I would be an honorary mother and just like the mothers today. Hallelujah. Psalm 48. And we're just going to read a few verses of scripture but keep your Bibles open because we're going to make some references and we have a backup scripture as well but these few verses read, we're starting at verse 12. They read, walk about Zion and go round about her. Tell the towers thereof. Mark ye well her bulwarks. Consider her palaces, that ye may tell it to the generation following. That's right. For this God right. is our God forever and ever. He will be our guide even unto death. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come before you this evening. God, first and foremost, saying thank you. Lord, we thank you because you said in your word that in all things to give thanks, for this is the will of God concerning us in Christ Jesus. And right now, God, we thank you for this opportunity to come together just to give your name the praise. God, we thank you for allowing us to worship and to learn more about you. And we're asking that you allow your Holy Spirit to fall afresh in this place and your anointing to flow throughout this vineyard. God, we love you, we honor you, and we magnify your name. We worship you, and we give your name the praise. We declare the victory and call it done. And in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. On today, I'd like to talk about there is victory in Zion. 
Somebody in here knows what I'm talking about. There is victory in Zion. In the world in which we live in, there seems to be a cloud of defeat looming everywhere you go. Our young men are being killed at an alarming rate and no one is being held accountable. Our young ladies are being sexually assaulted and their assaults are being justified. The country has been handed over to someone who is unqualified and uncaring and he was elected by the American people. Our elderly are being taken for every dime that they have and there's no one to defend them. But I want you to look at somebody to your left or look to someone to your right and I want you to say to them there is victory in Zion. I don't know if you believe it today but I need you to say it and make it personal. Shout it from your belly say my victory is in Zion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See here in this song the children of Israel understood that there was victory in Zion. They understood what Zion meant and the power that Zion possessed. And as children of God, we too have to understand the real meaning of Zion. And we have to understand that our power is in Zion. That we can't do anything by ourselves, but the God of Zion will be with us. He said in his word, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And he's never made a promise that he didn't keep. I just bless God today and I want somebody to remember and understand that your victory truly is in Zion. Well, this song is the third of three songs that told a story way back in 2 Samuel about a victory that God gave to David. So I want to give you just a little bit of the backstory, and the rest of it you can read uh, when you get home. In the 2 Samuel, in about chapter 10, I believe, David was then king. At the time, the king of the Ammonites Am <coughs> died, and his son then reigned. Well, David was being nice, he was being kind, and he said, let me honor his father by being nice to his son because his father had been nice to me. And you know, sometimes when you're nice to people, they take your kindness for weakness. I don't know about you, but I've had it happen to me a couple of times, and I just had to pray and say, Lord, I'm going to give them to you. David, but David was being kind, he said, I'm going to send some of my best men. And let his son know that I, I want to honor your father. And I just want to let you know I support you in your time of bereavement. Well, as always, Satan is always busy. The Bible makes it clear that it is his job to steal, kill, and destroy. So even in this moment, Satan used some of Hanan's commanders to whisper in his ear. They told him, do you really think that David is coming over here to honor your father? No, 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 no. He's coming over here to be nosy. He's sending people over here to spy us out so that he can take over our city. Unfortunately, some of us stray away from the voice of God. But if you're truly a child of God, you know your father's voice and you're going to heed his warning. So when Satan starts to speak, you can tell him, get behind me, Satan. You can rebuke him because you know that it's not a word from the Lord. Well, Hanan didn't think about it. He just went along with what they said. And in doing so, he sent the gentleman back to David in an embarrassing manner. He had shaved half of their beard and he had torn their garment from the buttocks down. And these were symbols to let them know that they were being submissive to him as king. Well, David heard about it and he wasn't really excited about it. And as always, Satan again is busy. And so when, the, when, when they found out that David knew, they said, we better get ready. We better arm up. We better line up for battle because it's on now. But as children of God, when Satan comes up against you, you need to be ready with the whole arm of God. So you can look Satan in your face and say, it's on now. You might come up against me with lies. You might come up against me with untruths. You might try to turn my friends against me. You might try to turn my family against me. But I'm standing in your face and letting you know it's on now. David said, that's all right. That's all right. Don't worry about it. I got it. I got it. It's okay. The, Emma, the Syrians, they borrowed some soldiers. They, they were lining them up front to back, back to front. They had some on one side and some on the other. 
And it just made me think about how sometimes in our lives, the enemy comes up against us like a flood and sur he surrounds us. One minute, on one hand, you've got your children acting crazy. On the other hand, you've got your, your husband or your wife even crazier than that. You go to work every day and somebody trying to get you fired off your job. You come to church and somebody work, working your nerves there. But, but my Bible tells me that when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. And David already knew what God could do because he was a man after God's own heart. So he wasn't worried. He said, that's all right. You can do that. But I got something for you. Which brings us to this 48th song. In this 48th song, it gives us three things that we need to do when we are in the midst of the battle to get ready to get the victory in Zion. Now, I want you to be clear that David understood that although Zion was a physical location where there were walls, there were towers, it was the city of the, the center of the city was Jerusalem where people could gather and where the Ark of the Covenant had been brought. He also understood the true power in Zion was not the place. It wasn't the walls. It wasn't the tower. But it was God himself dwelling in that city. David said, I tell you what. You can line up your army on either side. You can get as many men as you can. But I got the power of God on my side. I got not only this city. I got not only this army. But I got God. And if I got God, that's all that I need. And I want to let somebody in this place know. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care how bad your situation looks. Your nights might be long and your days might be dark. But if you got God on your side, you've already got the victory. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, there is victory in Zion. Well, David already knew that he had the victory because he had God on his side. And not only did he have God on his side, but God was in Zion. Well, in that moment, they wrote this song and Took the time to do three things. And I told you I wasn't going to hold you long. I just want to give you something that you can take with you. Three things to let you know that you've got the victory in Zion. First thing is you need to acknowledge the power of God. There is nobody like him in all the earth. God has all power in his hand. And the Bible tells us he can do anything but fail. In these first seven verses, they talked about how great the city was. They talked about how great God was. They talked about how great they, that God had done for them. And they were able to let you know that his power was so great that he was able to break up the ships of torture. Now understand that these ships were not any regular ships. They were ships that were built to carry cargo and to be able to go across the sea and withstand any type of wind. But God was so strong, just like he was in battle, that he broke up the ships. His strength was so strong that he was able to break up the enemy. And I want you to know it standing in the power of God. If you acknowledge God, that his strength is so powerful that he can break up your enemy. I don't care somebody's calling your name they're scandalizing your name you just trust it and call on the Lord acknowledge him and he will break up the enemy the Bible clearly tells us to trust in the Lord with all our heart and lean not into our own understanding and in all our ways acknowledge him and he will direct our path well not only did they acknowledge him in this song but even as the Israelites prepared for battle. They acknowledged him. They lined men up on one side. Joab and his men on one side. Abishar and his men on the other. And he said. 2 Samuel 10 11. If the Syrians be too strong for me. Then thou shalt help me. But if the children of Ammon be too strong for thee. Then I will come and help thee. Be of good courage and let us play the men for our people and for the cities of our God. And the Lord do that which seemeth him good. Even in the midst of battle, you have to worship the Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Verses 8 through 11 let us know that I don't care what you're going through. When the storm seems the roughest, when your nights seem the darkest, when your days seem the longest, when you can't find a friend anywhere, you still got to put on your garments of praise and worship God even in the midst of your battle. Because I'm, I'm here to tell you that when praises go up, blessings come down. So even when tears are rolling down your face, you got to open your mouth and cry out, there is victory in Zion. You got to open your mouth and say, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. 
prosper because I already have the victory. You got to give God praise no matter what. When the doctor says that they've done all they can do, open your mouth and worship the Lord. When your bills are doing, there's no money in the bank. Open your mouth and worship the Lord. When your children are acting crazy and your friends are acting funny, open your mouth and worship the Lord. Even in the midst of their battle, they worship the Lord. When you're worshiping God, Satan has no recourse. The Bible tells us if we resist him, he will flee. So if you open your mouth and worship God, he's going to have to turn around and run. When you put on the old armor of God, he's going to turn around and run. When you stomp your feet on his head, he's going to turn around and run. Even in the midst of your battle, worship the Lord. Because there is victory inside and finally, verses 12 through 14, the final thing that you have to do in order to get victory in Zion is to testify of God's goodness. Somebody in here knows what I'm talking about. Even when I'm at my lowest, God is still good. They used to say back in the day, God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good. Well, that saying is not just a saying, it's the truth. Because when I look back over my life and think about all that God has done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. And thank you, God, for saving me. God is good. He saved me when I was at my lowest. He was kind enough to send his son to Calvary to save a wretch like me. So even in the midst of my battle, I can testify of God's goodness. And the children of Israel can testify of God's goodness. Simply because not only were they surrounded on one side, armies on the other side, they didn't have to do a thing. All they had to do was stay and the armies began to retreat. I don't know about you, but I've seen God run off my enemies. He said in his word that he would make your enemies your footstool. And I don't know about you, but he's done that for me. And I trust him in everything that I do. And I believe on his word. And I'm not ashamed to tell somebody, if you just trust in the Lord, he will give you victory. I, and here we are again with David and the children of Israel being surrounded. But they didn't let that stop them. Because they knew that they already had the victory in Zion. They knew that they had the victory in Zion not because of the walls and the towers. Not because of the physical location. They knew that they had the victory in Zion because God is Zion. God is our power. God is our strength. God is our stronghold. One of my deacons that's not here anymore, he used to say he's a battle axe in the time of battle. And he proved himself to David because he sent the Syrians running on one side and he sent the Ammonites running on the other. And eventually they got not just the victory in the battle, but they even had, they showed God strong because the kings submitted to them. And if we just stand as children of God and show God strong in our lives by standing on his word, having faith in God, people will cry out, I yield, I yield, I can't hold out any longer. I want you to know that no matter what you're going through, no matter how bad it seems, you have the victory, your victory is in Zion. God is your Zion. He has all power. He can do anything but fail. And all you've got to do is trust in him and lean on him and believe in him and open your mouth. When your problems seem bigger than you can solve, just open your mouth and tell him, I've got victory in Zion. When it seems like everything is falling down around you, say, I've got victory in Zion. When it seems like there's nowhere for you to turn, that evil is on every hand, just open your mouth and say, I've got victory in Zion. Somebody tonight needs to know that although your situation looks the way it does, you already have the victory in God. And I want to leave you with this. Trust God through everything that you do. And never forget that the victory was had on the cross. All you got to do is walk in your victory. And it's already done. Amen. To so God be the glory for the things that he has done.